jina la Yesu Kristo ngeomba walio huko wakaweza kuja pande katika jina la Yesu Kristo katika jina la Yesu Kristo this is a beautiful day that the Lord has given unto us this is a beautiful day that the Lord has given unto us and before I go to the main word uh, give me Isaiah 55 Isaiah 55 verse 10 Isaiah 55 verse 10 and 11 but that when it is time for the word of God it's our time to thrive when it's time for the word of God it's our time to thrive and let's read for as the rain comes down as the snow from heaven do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater verse 11 so shall the word be that goes forth from the mouth it shall not return to be void but it shall accomplish what i please and it shall prosper and the thing for which i sent it and i will give me an iv and i will we see here that the word of god it's like rain so when you hear it's time for the word of god it's time for you to thrive it's time for you to birth new things because we see as the rain pours down there after the rain has poured something new is birthed even the environment changes grass starts to grow trees start to flourish flowers start to flourish new things are birthed out when the rain falls and that's the same case with the word when you hear it's time for the word of god it is your time to thrive it is your time to thrive amen it is your time to thrive Amen. And as you start in Genesis, the earth was void and formless. But when the word of God was spoken, something new things were birthed out. There was the sun. Go and read the first chapter of Genesis from verse there until 14 from you see that when God spoke the earth was formless full of dark but when god spoke there was land there was sky there was sun there was vegetation there was animals crawling there was animals even in the sea the fish new things were birthed out when the word of god was released in a formless in a void 
place. Amen. And now when it comes to you, the word of God is able to transform. The word of God is able to create. The word of God is able to fill any void that no man can fill. Amen. And therefore, when you hear it's word time, it's the time for the word. No, it's my time to thrive. It's my time to birth new things. It's my time. It's my time. Amen. And the word continues to, sell, to tell us that a man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. A man shall not live on bread alone. Bread alone. Do you know bread came out because of the word of God? When God spoke, let there be vegetation, there was wheat which could produce the bread. And so, God does not want us to focus on the resources. He wants us to focus on the real source, which is the word of God. He wants us to focus on the real source, which is the word of God. Therefore, we need to live on what made the bread, the word of God. And let the earth, in verse 11 of Genesis, it says, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plant yielding seeds and fruit trees. And so the word of God is the real source. Any other thing is just a resources. Anything that you see with your eyes even here, this glass, these tiles, these chairs, these stones that you see, they came from the word of God. When the God spoke, let there be dry land, there were stones that could make these rocks. There were some minerals that could make such things. There were some minerals that could make even this, the vegetation that could make such papers. All the raw materials of this microphone, the real source is the word of God. Anything you see, anything you see, it was birthed by the word of God. And therefore, we should not be ignorant of the word of God. We should never be ignorant. Because it's the real source. It's the real source of all that you want. Of all that you want. It is not right that we want everything that was created by the word of God and despise the word of God itself it's not right you know i see some young people who are maybe in campus and school when coming to church they cannot carry their notebook but the word of god is the source of that curriculum that they are studying in school there would be no biology if there was no god did not speak vegetation animals to be on this earth the word of God is the real source of any curriculum you say there will be no accounted jobs there will be no businesses if it were not for the word of God what could you be selling if the earth was void and full of dark if there were no dry land the tofroti maguta maguta to sell if there were no raw materials to make products to sell, if there were no vegetation, crops to, to sell, what would people be doing in the market? It is because the word of God is the real source. It's the real source. It's the real source. And we need to value it more than ever. You know, at times, People come to church when it's worship time they are there when it's praise time they are there but when it's war time they are not settled and it's the it's the best moment in their life that gods want to birth new things in their life because he's the same yesterday today and forever if in the creation he birth new things what makes you feel that he won't birth new things when he speaks to your heart when he speaks to your spirit You'll birth new things. You cannot remain the same. If you focus on the word, if you open your heart to the word of God, you cannot remain the same. 
you can never, you can never. Because you birth new things. You sprout new things. You sprout new things. And I want us, we declare this morning, and to repeat after me, that I will not live on bread alone. Say like you mean it. I will not live on bread alone. But I will live on every word that comes from God. But I'll live from every word that comes from God. It is the real source. It is the real source. The Bible also says that the just, the righteous shall live by faith. And faith comes by healing and healing the word of God. And therefore you cannot build your faith without healing the word of God. And which is the real source. Amen. Amen. So, if the just shall live by faith, faith is our oxygen, it is our air, and if it comes by the word of God, we should never neglect the word of God. Amen? As believers, the word of God is our oxygen, it's our air, we should never neglect it. In Jeremiah 23, 29, we see that the word of God is likened to be fire. To be fire. To be fire. So when you hear the word of God, when you listen to the word of God, you load yourself with fire that is able to consume anything that cannot stand the test of time. When you hear the word of God, when you listen, when you meditate upon the word of God, you load yourself with fire. You charge your spirit with the fire that consumes anything that cannot endure the test of time. Be it temptation, be it sickness. You'll be able to overcome it. You'll be able to overcome it in advance. Because there will be fire in you to consume any temptation that may come your way. Like Jesus did when Satan brought the three temptations. He said it is written because he had the fire in him. He had loaded the fire in him. The word of God was in his spirit. Amen. It is also likened as a hammer. So when you listen to the word of God. When you meditate upon the word of God. You get to get the hammer that you need to break upon any hard rock into pieces. You may say that there is this mountain in my life. There is this hard challenge in my life. But what you need is the right word. The right hammer. Which is the, in the word of God. That you may break that barrier. That you may break that wall into pieces. Amen. That you may bring it down into pieces. Amen. The word of God is also being. Is also in Psalms it says. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light and a lamp unto my path. So even as you pray, even as you go before the Lord, pray that he may lead you to the right light that you need in this season. Because at, maybe we have never been in this season any other day. It's a new season you are in in your life. And let's say you have gone into a new neighborhood and you don't know any place, you don't know the way and it's full of dark. You cannot go far. But when there is light, you'll be able to follow the right paths that are there. So, when you are in a new season in your life, you need the right light. So that you may be able to see. So that you may not fall into ditches. So that you may not be hit by stones. So that you may not walk and hit the wall. But when you have the right light, from the word of God. You'll have clarity. You'll be safe. You won't go in cycles. You won't be walking the same place. You won't waste your time going in cycles. 
when you have the right light from the word of God. Amen. And as we have seen that the word created light living creatures, vegetation, skies and the moon and all that was created God saw it was so good. After creating all that, God saw and said it was good. And therefore, when you allow the word of God to work in your life, to birth new things in your life, God will see you. God will be proud of you because he'll see it is good. It will, it will be pleasant to him. You please your maker. When you allow the word of God to make you, when you allow the word of God to birth new things in your life, it will be pleasant to your maker. And all the glory and honor will go back to him. Amen. When you allow the word of God to build your family, to build your business, to build your career, to build your life, it will glorify God. It will be pleasant to to, the, to your maker and he receive all the praise and honor it will not be just about you it will be about him amen amen for one minute as you are seated right there just pray for the right light from the word of god that you that you need in this season pray for the light right light from the word of god that you need in this season just open up your mouth as you are seated as you are seated in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, help us, help us, help us. We cannot do this without you. Some of us are in the new season in our lives and we have never been there before. We need the right light, my God, Jesus, that you may not go in circles, that you may not hit the wall, that you may not fall into ditches, Lord. Help us, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Lead us to the right light, my Father, that we need in this season of our life, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Oh, that it may be pleasant to you, my God, that whatever we do, whatever we do, Lord Jesus, it may be pleasant to you. It may give you glory and honor, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because your Holy Spirit is leading us to the right light, that we need in this season, Lord, my Father, that it may birth new things in our lives, that it may birth new things in the, our lives. Oh, thank you for your word is the real source. Others are just resources, Lord. Thank you, my Father. We honor you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No, I'll speak about the glory of the latter church. Glory of the latter church. Give me amplified version. Haggai chapter 2 verse 7 and 9. Haggai chapter 2 verse 7 and 9. Where it says that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than of the former. And in this place I shall give ultimate peace and prosperity. And at this time, you and me are the church. And we are the latter church. And therefore, the glory of God, the glory of the latter church should manifest in our lives. The glory of the latter church should manifest in our lives. Amen. Haggai chapter 2, verse 7 and 9. And Let's read. And I'll shake all the nations and the desire and the precious things of all nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The next. Silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Next. The latter glory of this house with its successor to which Jesus came shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I'll give peace and prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. 
and for you maybe to understand the glory what is glory the glory of god it has everything contained in the character of god at times it has been described as the manifest presence of god and in hebrew it it is translated as heavyweight it is the heaviest biggest the grandest thing above about someone and in this case it's about god it is the heaviest thing about god it is the grandest thing about god the glory of god the shakina glory of god and but more it is power it is the kind of power that resurrects delivers overcomes and transform amen amen and therefore and that's why we see that in his presence there is liberty second corinthians 3:17 in his presence there is liberty in his glory there is being set free people are set free in his glory there is being they are being delivered in his glory amen so anything that was nuisance is overcome in his presence in his glory anything that was nuisance and ultimate peace and prosperity is experienced you know when someone is being delivered when someone is being transformed by the glory of god and the demon is out of him there is ultimate peace and he is able even to focus on on valuable things and that's how the word of god has told us there that when the glory of god comes there will be ultimate peace and prosperity no country that has prospered where there was no peace even in the reign of solomon when even the streets of jerusalem they were full of gold people are stamping on gold it is, it is because that time they were peace there was peace there was peace when solomon was reigning that's how that's why he was able to prosper as a king he led to the prosperity of the nation of israel at that time because there was so much peace and when the enemy makes us to lack peace with sickness with maybe temptation with distractions of life with storms of life and we lack peace we lack focus our going ahead our pro- prosperity will be limited we won't be men and women that god intends us to be amen so when the glory of god which is the biggest the heaviest thing comes into our lives any nuisance won't withstand it any distraction won't withstand it in the name of jesus they are had the original house of the glory of god was the tabernacle it was the temple but under the new covenant as believers as believers we are the temple of god we are the god's house we are the temple of god we see in this Cor- corinthians 316 it says do you not know that you are the temple of god and not that the spirit of and not that the spirit of god dwells in you that you are the temple of god you are the temple of god you are the carrier of his glory right now you are the latter church you are the carrier of his glory right now amen and therefore we as believers we have unlimited potential because of the works of the cross after the curtain was torn after the temple curtain was torn into two we have the boldness we have the boldness to approach the throne of grace to seek help and we'll see some few things for the glory of the latter church to manifest in us for the glory of the latter church to manifest in us to be seen in us one is we have to build our faith daily we have to build our faith daily we have to build our faith daily 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And continuous feeding ourselves with the word. We feed our faith. And because the word of God is a mirror. As it's, it's in James 1. James 1, 23 and 24. We see the word of God is a mirror. James 1, 23 and 4. That you are able to see your potential in the word of God. You are able to see the person you are supposed to be in the word of God. And we read, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Uh -huh. Next, 24. For he observes himself. This through the lenses of the word of God. You observe yourself and goes away and immediately forget what kind of man he was. So when you read the word of God, you see who you are. You see who you are. It's your mirror. It's your mirror. You see who you are. And therefore, as we feed our faith, we be able to see who we are. We be able to see that the glory of the latter church should be bigger than the former and we are the latter church therefore we, we will be sensitive to seek this glory in our lives amen we won't walk by sight we won't walk by carnality but we'll walk by faith we'll walk by faith as the word says amen and therefore we we'll be men of the spirit and our lives will be built up in line with the word of God. Amen. The other thing for the glory of God. The latter church to manifest in our lives. We need total surrender to the Holy Spirit. We need to totally surrender to the Holy Spirit. And him being our helper. He will help you to manifest the glory of God. He will help you. 2 Corinthians 3.18 2 Corinthians 3.18 2 Corinthians 3.18 Here we'll see that when you totally surrender to the Holy Spirit, He will transform you from one degree of glory to even more glory. Give me amplified version. He will be able to transform you from one degree of glory to another. I will read this one. But we all, and all of us, as we unveil face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, to behold in the word of God as a mirror, the glory of the Lord, you see here even also we see that the word of God is, is a mirror. It's still being affirmed here. The glory of the Lord are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. For this comes from the Lord. The transformation from one glory to another, it comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. And therefore, when you totally surrender to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. He will transform us from one degree of glory to another. Amen? Amen? The third thing is we should have unwavering belief in God. Unwavering belief in God. John 14, 12. We should have unwavering belief in God. We should be doubt dissolvers. We should not allow us, our hearts, our lives, our spirit to doubt God in any way. John 14, 12. And it says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than this. Only when you believe in him, when you believe in him, you will do even greater things than this. When you believe in him, you will do even greater things that you see in the word of God. Amen? Amen? 
because his word never lies it is true and that's why i started when you feed yourself with the word and you you get the sense that if you believe in god you'll be able to do even greater of what he did you be you won't walk like any other person here on earth you won't be a normal like any other normal person here on earth amen amen the other fourth thing that is we must intentionally talk with god we must intentionally talk with god we must intentionally talk with god exodus 34 29 35 Exodus 34 29 to 35 Here we see the times that Moses went to the mountain Mount Sinai and he was seeking God and he was given the 10 commandments he went there intentionally for 40 days and 40 nights and God spoke to him and he came down with the with the 10 commandments and in verse 29 I want us we see in verse 29 here it says when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand he was not aware that his face was radiant because of what because he had spoken with the Lord when is the last time that you are intentional to speak to God when is the last time that you decided that at this time i want to be intentional with my god i want to be intentional to spend time to speak to god and speaking with god it means you are speaking and he's communicating back to you so even the growing that moses had it was because he had spoken to the lord he had spoken to the lord many people maybe had went to mountains those days but the glory that was on the face of Moses it is because he had spoken with God amen he had spoken with God and it's was that it says when they saw his face they were afraid to come near him they were afraid to come near him and in this time and era for us to talk with God we have been given prayer and prayer is a way of communicating with god and we must be intentional about it we must be intentional about it let it not be like you are being forced maybe to prayer to come and pray but it must first come from you you must be intentional so that the glory of god may be fall on you amen and being the latter church we have an advantage because after the cutting temple was torn into two we we have the confidence to approach the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace to help us in time of need therefore it's not like the early time where it's only the priest who would go who would go to to pray you know even the israel when they had a problem they called unto moses and they told him now go and speak to god they themselves the israel they were not speaking to god himself now you you have an advantage because of the works of jesus on the cross you can speak to him you can speak to him any time you want any time you want and therefore you have to be intentional to speak to him you have to be intentional to speak to him daily you have to be intentional you have to set time to talk with him weekly you have and in a place where there is no distractions and that's why you see Moses went to the mountain because there are there there is no many businesses there hakuna traffic ya watu huko kwa mlima watu wengine wanaenda hivi wengine hakuna jam huko kwa mlima you have to set a place where there is no distraction amen Amen. And it was Jesus norm when he was here on earth. During the day he was he would teach men. 
And at night he would go with his disciples to the mountain. He would go with his disciples to the mountain. A place of no distraction. A place that it's you with God. And we have to change this notion that we go to prayers because we have needs. But you go in prayer because you want to walk to talk with him. Lord, I've come that I may talk with you, Lord. I want to hear from you. And he can never fail you. He can never fail you. If you are genuine and you want to speak with him, he will speak to you. Amen. Hallelujah. In Matthew 17 verse 2, Jesus went to the mountain with his three disciples, Peter, John, and James. And we see here, prayer transforms people. It's able to transform people. And we see here, and it says, Matthew 17 verse 2, and his appearance changed dramatically. And in their presence, and his face shone with heavenly glory, clear and bright, like the sun, and his clothing became as white as light. Cause of prayers, Jesus was transformed. He was at a set place, a quiet place with no distraction. Because he was talking with his maker. Transformation came. The glory of God. Amplified version says clearly. With heavenly glory. He shone with heavenly glory. Not any other glory. Heavenly glory. Was evident. Was evident. Clear and bright. Like the sun. And became white. As light. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, God wants us to manifest as the latter church. To manifest His glory as the latter church. To totally surrender to Him. To have unwavering faith in Him. To be intentional. To speak with him in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I want us we stand on our feet we stand on our feet and I want us we surrender to the Holy Spirit fully just open up your mouth and say Holy Spirit I surrender to you fully that you may transform me to, the, to one degree of glory to another as your word has said Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. I surrender to you that you may transform me from one degree of glory to another. It is the Holy Spirit, our helper, who can do that. It is not by our effort. It is the Holy Spirit who can help us. It is the Holy Spirit who can help us. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth this morning. Open up your mouth this morning. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Total surrender to the Holy Spirit. Total surrender to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth. The Spirit of might. He is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. Open up your mouth. Rekada rababo zande. Rekada rababo zakate ligada. Rekete ligada zande. Rababo zakashaka zakata lagada. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you this morning, Lord. We want to totally surrender to you. We want to totally surrender to you, Lord. We want to totally surrender to you, oh Lord. Holy Spirit, we want to totally surrender to you. That you may take us from one glory, from one degree of glory to another. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, we surrender to you, Holy Spirit. We surrender to you, Holy Spirit. We cannot do this life without you. We 
we cannot do this life without you we cannot do this life without you we cannot manifest as the latter church without you holy spirit we cannot do without you in the name of jesus 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 help us help us help us help us help us this morning help us this morning help us this morning We don't want to walk by sight, but we want to walk by faith. We want to walk by faith. We want to walk by faith. We want to walk by the word of God. The word of God is our mirror. It's our true mirror. It's our true source. It's our true source of life. It's our true source of life. It's our true source of life. May it birth new things in our lives. May it birth new things to you today. May you pray that for the grace that you may intentionally feed yourself with the word of God. That you may grow in faith. That you may grow in faith. That you may grow in faith. Rakashaka Zakateligada, Repeke Teligada, Zotoliba Babo, Sande, 
You would remain the same. You would remain the same. When the glory of God comes upon your life. Any nuisance. Any nuisance. You are delivered from any nuisance. Your life is transformed. Rikado 